Hey everybody, how's it going? Red Baron here, flying at you with another Lestrals Champion League video. This week, we're going against Wurtz and his Earth deck. So let's see if I can navigate the forest and continue my win streak. Alright, so here we are, game one, and I open up a really strange hand. I open up an Astrabid, two Rhyceros as a Jolton, Ambrosia. And I kept this hand, even though I really shouldn't have. Just because I had Jolton for the search and I asked Strabbit hoping to hit some back row support and I don't really get that. So I'm already starting off like very slow here. So I decided to set the Ambrosia to fake a back row and then I pass the turn. And then now it's Wurtz's turn so he opens up very very strong. He opens up two Nogs so he'll play this one and then he will play his second one. And this gives him a really, really strong hand advantage against me. And I just have nothing but Elestrals in my hand. And uh, resting on your laurels that I may or may not be able to use any time soon. So he plays Rummagem first and there's nothing I can do about it. So he goes ahead and searches for his Inkwilinks. This will give him the ability to snipe any of my back rows. And he <laughs> then... He also draws into his full oi forest, which is just, ah, it just hurts. Like, he's getting so much field advantage right now. And not only that, he has Demeter. He literally drew everything he needed with those two Nectar of the Gods. So he plays that. He plays it face down. He disenchants Demeter to increase uh, Rummagem's attack, and he swings into Astrabit, and there's nothing I can do about it. So bye-bye, Astrabit. We love you, you will be best rabbit forever, but you're dead. So, my turn now. I draw and <laughs> I don't draw anything. I draw all to the stars. It's not gonna help me now. Because I don't have I don't have Zeus or any of my stadiums. So I try to activate Jolton here, try to get a stadium, but he denies that with a very good timely Gorgon's gaze. So I'm stuck in the stuck in the river. On a boat without a paddle. So, he summons the equal links that he searched for earlier. And, um, he nexuses and destroys my Ambrosia. Now, you may be wondering why I didn't resting on the laurels last turn. It's because resting on the laurels on a rum gem, there's no point in doing that. And I was hoping to do it on his equal links, but I totally forgot that by nexusing Nexusing to his Inkwilinx, he would have two spirits on it and no longer targetable. So I continued to draw into absolutely nothing. I drew into a thunderstorm. And I was like, okay, but I see, I see the light at the end of the tunnel. If I can get some pressure, if I can get some like high attacked Elestrals, I can start pinging things on the field, destroying the Foloi, destroying the meter, and attack with Equilinx. Um, but all I can do for right now is play the Rice Arrows. He ends up going to Sprouter, and this pretty much secures my doom. He searches for the Scythe, plays the Scythe, after he moves everything over, he plays the Scythe, and he puts it on his Rummagem. Now, this is good for me in two ways. As you notice, he has now five spirits, so he's been going through a lot of his spirits. Um, and I have 15, so I'm feeling good just because spirit-wise. If I can just get some cards to back up this thunderstorm and this resting on the laurels, I feel like I'm safe. But he then plays a second demeanor and he nexuses two spirits back onto Inkwilinx, giving it a making it a four enchanted elestral. And this is just scary. He has so much power on the field. So yeah, he attacks with uh Rubber Gem, and by doing so he recovers two spirits because he has Demeter and Scythe on the field and then he proceeds to deal five damage to me um and yeah things are looking quite scary he's at four spirits I'm at 10 I draw and what do I get <sighs> another 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 thunderstorm so I take this take um uh, at this point I take advantage of the fact that his Rama Gem is equipped with Scythe and I resting your laurels it. Just get it out of there. No more, no more regening spirits. Uh, I have to play Rhyceros and a fake back row and I pass the turn by setting a thunderstorm. Now I'm like, pass. 
So things aren't looking good at all. And I believe he just from here, he plays Tectoros. Well, first he nexus is over to Sprouter. He decides to pop a back row. I put the thunderstorm down there just to hope he would hit that instead. But he has to alter the stars and he places Tectaros and he proceeds to kind of swing in my face. So Sprouter attacks, equaling his attacks, and then Tectaros attacks. I accidentally add my spirits into my back row here. So I have to just take them out and then I will put them back into the underworld. And then let's see here. What happens next? Oh, I know what happens next. Absolutely nothing. I don't draw anything. And that ends game one. Completely dominated. And I'm scared for right now. I was like, I can't let it end like this. My next hand for game two is actually a lot better. I start with Toxian. I burn him for a single damage. And then I set the GG and I pass. He sets the card. And I believe he goes, tries to go into Rummagem again. Or no, Sprouter. He goes into Sprouter, uh, attempting to get his artifact. But I'm going to go ahead and this scares me. Because Sprouter is, has less attack than Toxian. So he must have Demeter in his hand or something that allows him to get over Toxian. So I immediately Gorgon gaze it. Not only does it stop its attack, but it also starts, stops the search. So my turn. I uh, draw Astrab at... I play my Thunderstorm, blind T-Storming here. I hit Gorgon's Gaze, which is great. And then I proceed to play my Mount Olympus. And instead of playing wide here, I decide to do something else. I go tall. I re-enchant Zap, um, <laughs> Zapter. I re-enchant Toxian to ping him for one more damage. And then I tack into Sprouter doing an extra damage. And then I pass the turn. He, <laughs> that, back row is a complete bluff he has rise from the ashes now what happens here is he mistakenly reads the card he he thinks that sprouter activates anytime you cast it but sprouter is only on normal cast so he rises sprouter and he just proceeds from there he's like is you know what whatever i'm still going to do this anyways i'm going to ascend into ravagem and Ravagem is really good right now. Allows him to get two cards. So he goes for Equalings. He goes for Foloi Forest. Those are great choices because the Foloi Forest gets rid of my Mount Olympus. And now Scavagem is stronger than my Toxian. And he's going to be able to attack over it like he does. Fortunately, I've equipped it with two Enchanted Elestrals so I don't lose any life. I then proceed to draw Resting on the Laurels, which is my saving grace here. So I play that, I get rid of the scavenger gem, and then I know he has equal links to spec, so I took a little bit of time here to decide which, whether Astrabbit or Riceros is the best, better play. I just go to Riceros because I don't want him attacking me if he draws Demeter or anything like that. So I play Riceros, I get in, uh, get in for a damage, and <laughs> he then plays another, another Rise from the Ashes, and he, he kind of makes the same mistake. He misreads... Scavengem here. Scavengem's effect only activates when you ascend to it. And also, he, he actually forgot last time to um, expend for scavenge, uh, Scavengem, so that's what you see there. Then he proceeds to Earthquake by So he's like, kind of like, ah, you know what? Bye, Rosaros. I was like, oh, bye, bye, Rosaros. And we're all like, bye, Rosaros. So he, I asked him about his uh, spirits. It's a bit glitchy there. But I had confirmed that he has zero spirits. So I top deck Toxian here. And then he plays Gorgon's Gaze. And he uses the two spirits from Scavagem to Gorgon's Gaze my Toxian. Which is a really good play. Prevents him from losing. And hope he hopes that he can somehow overcome this. Next turn, the only thing he can do is attack straight into Toxian. And that's fine. Um, I draw into Helios Chariot Ride, doesn't really do anything, so I just put Astrabbit in defense mode, and then I see an out. I have Shield. Shield's one of my options. So, I grab Shield, set both Shield and Helios' Chariot Ride, and then proceed to pass my turn. So, he's not left with many options here, so he draws and then proceeds to attack, and then I Shield, 
and then this concludes game two so now it's just one 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 we're both into into game three it's close and i open a very 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 strong hand um he but he also opens fairly strong too he opens for Louis forest and viserys Vi that's such a strong opening viserys is arm automatically a six cost elestral six attack elestral excuse me so but i have my own plans i kind of play my cards out of order here what i should have done was play thunderstorm first to get rid of that back row in case it was like a pta or something like that but i did not so that was a bit on my part because if that was a pta that would mess me up but i ella check here searching for zeus and then i do the thunderstorm and it's an earthquake so i'm very confused why he sets an earthquake and he kind of talks about that later at the end of the game he's like uh yeah i shouldn't have set that because that would have been his one out he said he didn't have any back rows so after i destroy the earthquake i play zeus and then disenchant it to run over his viserys and i set, I set my back rows and i run over the viserys i'm really really liking my my board state here because i have complete control he tries to rummage him add to his hand but i deny him the search by playing my gorgon's gaze i don't want him to get any field advantage any hand advantage i don't want him to get any of those equal inkses to pop my zeus so i stop it and he passes the turn i draw resting laurel un resting on your laurels it does nothing here so i just do the same thing i summon riceros disenchant and then attack attack for our damage now i'm feeling a little bit more safe here because i have riceros on the field even if he summons something he will not be able to attack immediately he proceeds to summon another, his second Viceros here. Just so, and it's still a six attack. So I have to get rid of it. I have, so I PTA it. Uh, field control, and I just had, didn't have anything that could get over. So field is clear. I draw again. I draw a second Viceros. So what do I do? I summon the second Viceros. And this is really good double protection because even now even if he uses his own resting on his on your laurels or earthquake on any of my Rosaris's, i still prevent him from attacking any of my other cards for a turn so here he summons tectaros and uses rise from the ashes on his viceros to hopefully stop me from attacking but i draw jolton here so i play jolton I search for my stadium and I immediately play it. And this is pretty much the nail in the coffin right here. By playing my own stadium, it gets rid of his Forloy Forest. And I'm able to attack both over. I'm able to attack over both Viserys and Tectaros by disenchanting my Zeus. And I have a full board of Lestrals, and he has absolutely nothing. He Compared to game one, this is the complete opposite of what happened. He is in dire straits. He literally has nothing. Five spirits left. He needs to hope for a miracle. He draws. He thinks about what is going to happen, about expending spirit. And no, he decides not to because that's the end of game. All right. So that's the end of game four against Wurtz and his Earth deck. Coming into this, we knew it was going to be a hard matchup and we weren't disappointed. We ended up losing the first game and continuing to win the second and third game so if you enjoyed this match and want to watch me and see if i can continue my win streak and become undefeated in the first Leshals champion league go ahead hit that like button and subscribe to me and i'll see you later bye hi